First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Rachel for inviting us to this uh, lovely venue for the meeting and also to everybody that's organised it and for you all to come in along tonight. I've only got five minutes, so I'll crack on. Now, the new leader of UKIP, whoever he or she may be, is going to face some very big challenges. There's the question of money. How do we raise an enormous amount of money for the election? There's the organisation of the party, which is dependent upon volunteers. There is the continued development and presentation of policy, which is very important. And, of course, within a few short months, we're going to have a general election, probably the biggest challenge that we've faced in our history. Now, UKIP leader is going to have a lot of challenges. Thank goodness one of the problems that he may have faced, he or she may have faced, is now been removed. And of course, after Mr Haig's statement last week that there was going to be no referendum on the Lisbon Treaty, after David Cameron's policy of uh, renegotiation in inverted commas, Tory opposition to the EU is a big problem that's been removed from UKIP in the next general elections. The Tories have betrayed us many times on the European Union. Ted Heath when he took us in, Margaret Thatcher when she gave up the, uh, the uh, veto on legislation, and of course John Major with the uh, Treaty on European Union and making us all citizens of the European Union. But David Cameron has achieved a Tory first. He's betrayed this country over the European Union before he's even won an election. <laughs> Now, on, uh, I was invited on to BBC's News 24 last week, and this is the way I summed it up. There can be no doubt now whatsoever that the country cannot trust the Tory party on the European Union. UKIP is the only credible party of withdrawal. Cameron's policies of renegotiation will simply be laughed at by the European Union, as they already have been this week. The anti-EU vote will only have one respectable place to go in the general election, and that is the UK Independence Party. Now, 17 years ago, we set the principles for this party when it was formed in a room in the London School of Economics. It had three main principles. To help bring about Britain's unconditional withdrawal from the European Union, not to be a one-issue party or a pressure group because they cannot win elections, or so they cannot win votes in a domestic election, and to become a force in national politics. Look how fantastically we've done in that 17 years. For the first thing, we've survived, which is unique in British uh, political history, and you don't need me to tell you that we came second in a national election in June. We scored at 16.5% of the vote, we beat the government into third place and we got 13 MEPs who are working incredibly hard for the party and the cause. Fantastic achievement and it's all down to people like you, the members and the activists. But what are we going to achieve in 2010? Well, I think now, after the Tory party's uh, announcements last week, we can expect a lot of the votes that came to UKIP in June <coughs> to stick with UKIP. A lot of the Tory votes will stick with us. But, of course, it looks like the Labour vote is going to collapse, most likely. Those Labour voters are not going to vote for the Tory party, and they're not going to vote for anything that looks or sounds like the Tory party. The key, one of the key messages I want to get out to you tonight, and in this leadership election, whoever wins, is we cannot just seem to appeal to disenchanted Tory voters. We have got to seem to appeal to disenchanted voter, labors, uh, voter uh, Labour voters as well. And, of course, we've got to appeal to the 39% of people who didn't bother to vote last time because they think it's all pointless and doesn't make any sense. The Tories believe that we can lose them 50 seats. Well, let's lose them 50 seats, or 75 seats, or 100 seats, and the best thing that can happen for us and our country is that we get a hung parliament, which makes it even harder for the political elite at Westminster to betray our country into the European Union. Remember, in 1993, when the Maastricht Treaty was passed, it went through on three votes. If there had been two or three UKIP MEP, MPs there at the time, it couldn't have happened. Now, we can take UKIP up to the next level in this general election. But how are we going to do it? I believe that we have to do it by talking about the issues. It's going to be about policy and policy ideas on things that ordinary voters care about. 
and top of their agenda are things like immigration, the economy, jobs, taxation, crime and the threat from growing Islamic fundamentalism in the UK. That's your red card, Gerard, I'm afraid. OK, thank you very much. I've obviously <laughs> overstepped my mark. <laughs> Quickly, can I say, if you do vote for me, I'm not making you any rash promises. What I'll do is work as hard as leader as I've done as an MEP, and I will keep to the principles that I've outlined to you tonight.